This is Twit. Now this, this was a request. We have Karsten. Karsten Bodney is one of our producers. And he's creating a haunted house for his oh, kids and the, their awesome. school. Yeah. So he's like, well, could you do something like, we want to do the mad scientist thing. I'm like, yes. Yes, I can. And this is about as simple as we can get. It's, it's basically a mad scientist bubbler. A little bit of 3D printed parts, a single Arduino, a ring of WS2812s, and an air pump to generate the little bubbles that will refract the light. Now, this is code that we've used on so many projects, so it shouldn't really be a surprise to any of the Arkitas. It's simple, and yet, if you put four or five of these next to each other, it, yeah. just, it looks very cool. Yeah, set them off in the background, but I mean, the fact that they're all lit up from the bottom, and yeah. I mean, th that's going to punch yeah. in the background. That's going to add a lot of dynamic and, and depth. Oh, yeah. Now, we're, we're in a really well-lit uh, studio, yeah. so you can kind of see it, but I mean, imagine a haunted house. It's at night. You know, you've, you've got everything else kind of done up with mm -hmm. the cobwebs and the fog, and then you, you've got the mad scientist part of the haunted house, and you've got a bunch of these, and then maybe some extra other stuff that we might be showing off in maybe, future episodes. Maybe if you've got a nice sound system, you just get the sound of like bubbles popping. Yeah. Them. And little Tesla Not coils. Big, yes. <laughs> just yeah. to set it off. So folks, the sky's the limit, but of course we got to start with this one. Now, uh, let's start with a, uh, a little overview of some of the parts that you're going to need because right. uh, you're going to have to order them now. If you want to make this for Halloween, you, this is the start of October. You've, this is going to take about two weeks to get the parts and then you've got another week to assemble everything, which should be perfect. Assembling the electronics for the Mad Scientist Bubbler is actually pretty straightforward. You'll need a 24 LED WS2812 ring, an Arduino Nano to drive it, a 3 amp UBEC for the power supply, a 5.5 millimeter power jack, and two diodes. The first thing we're going to do is to load the code on the Arduino. We do this up front because we want to make sure the Arduino is functioning properly before we solder it into the project. If your computer recognizes the Arduino and successfully uploads your code into memory, then you're ready to start assembling the electronics. Let's start with the LED ring. We need three wires to power and control the ring. One for ground, one for 5 volt power, and one for the digital control pin from the Arduino. Turn the ring over and you'll see four pads, DI or digital in, 5V for 5 volt power, GND for ground, and DO for digital out. We're not daisy chaining this ring to more LEDs, so just tin the DI, 5V, and GNT pads with a small dollop of solder. Heat the pad, not the solder, and don't put too much. I'm using 24 gauge silicone wire for my power connections and 30 gauge for my data. It's flexible, resistant to heat, and easy to work with. In this project, I'm using red for 5 volt power, black for ground, and white for data. Cut about 7 inches of each color, then strip and tin the ends. Solder one end of each wire to the pads on the LED ring, making sure to orient the wire so that the slack runs into the middle of the ring. Again, white to DI, red to 5V, and black to GND. Once you are satisfied with your soldering job, let's insert the ring into the LED ring assembly. There's a notch cut out on one side of the bottom of the assembly. This is both the front of the assembly and the channel for the wires soldered to the bottom of the LED ring. Gently push the ring into place, making sure that the wires are in the notch and the LED ring is pushed all the way into the LED trench. There are four holes underneath the LED ring in case your alignment is off. Simply push a tool through the holes to pop up the ring and start again. With the LED ring and the LED ring assembly, we can set it aside to work on the base. The base houses the Arduino, the UBEC, and the 5.5 millimeter jack, as well as the diodes. Strip and tin the input leads to the UBEC, then push them through the nut and washer in that order, then through the mounting hole for the 5.5 millimeter power jack. Slip a piece of heat shrink tubing over each lead, then solder the red positive lead to the center pin and the black ground lead to the sleeve. Slide the heat shrink over the solder joints and heat them to insulate. Push the 5mm jack into its mounting hole, then slide over the washer and tighten the nut to secure the jack into place. The next part of the power system is a little bit tricky to assemble, because we want the UBEC to power both the Arduino and the LED ring, but we don't want the Arduino to power the UBEC or the ring when we plug it into a USB port for programming. Doing so will draw far too much power from the Arduino's power supply, eventually leading to its destruction. This is why we need diodes. We're using a pair of diodes, one for the ground and one for the 5 volt line. Diodes only allow power to flow in one direction, from the anode or negative end to the cathode or positive end. 
By using them in line with the leads going from the UBEC to the Arduino, power is allowed to flow to the Arduino, but not back to the UBEC or LEDs. We're going to cut four short pieces of 30 gauge silicone wire, two red and two black. Strip and tin all ends, then cut the leads on the diodes to about half an inch each. To one, solder black leads to each end, to the other, red leads. Insulate with heat shrink. Now we need to solder the power leads to the 5 volt and ground pads on the Arduino Nano. Look closely at the diodes. You'll see that one end has a band. This is the negative side. Power will flow to this end from the other, but not the other way around. We want power to flow through the red leads to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino and out the ground pin. Line up your wires so that the band on the black wire is further away from the Arduino and the band on the red wire is closer to the Arduino. Then solder in place. Cut, strip, and tin the output lines from the UBEC. Now slip a piece of heat shrink tubing over the lead and connect all three red lines, one from the UBEC, one from the Arduino, and one from the LED ring, and solder them together. Do the same thing for all the black lines. Slide the heat shrink tubing into place, then apply heat to insulate. The last step for the integration of the electronics is to connect the data line to the Arduino. You could use any digital pin that you'd like, but the code that I created for this demo uses digital pin 3. Solder the wire to the appropriate pin and set it into the mounting channel in the base. Now, for the moment of truth. Plug in your 12 volt power supply. If you wired everything correctly, you should now be treated to a mad science light show.